All right, welcome everybody. Um, we have, uh, in addition to Janet, our regular guest, we also have Mark Schroeder. Schroeder? Schroeder. Schroeder, sorry, Mark Schroeder. Um, and I don't know if uh, Mary Beth was going to try to make it. She's going to try, but probably not. She's in the city today. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to do, so that you don't have to stick around for the whole meeting, Mark, um, is to get to you first. We can't do, we don't have enough people to do uh, approve the minutes anyway. So maybe we could just jump into Mark's uh, business here. Uh, Mark, you want to just introduce yourself uh, a little bit and tell us why you're here and what you'd like, uh, maybe we can help you with. Sure. So uh, my name is Mark Schrader. I lived in Trumbull since 1984. Uh, my wife Penny was born here in Trumbull and Nichols area. And currently, I'm running the farmers market with Mary Beth Thornton. We jumped in and took the market over last year when there was a change of management at the Nichols Improvement Association in January. In the general meeting, the board was kind of kicked out and we went put in because the members were not doing. So Mary Beth and I stepped in to take over the farmers market before basically my meeting. Uh, and Mary Beth is actually moving to New Mexico in December. So she's going to be going to work. Um, so we're looking for some people to, to run the market. So what I did is I put a little slide presentation together and I tried to share it, see if it works. Uh, kind of Great. show you what the market's about. So I'm bear with me one second and I'm try to get it to work. See my screen. There you go. Can you see the West Nichols Farmers Market? Yep. Okay. Okay, so the Nichols Farmers Market is run every other, excuse me, every Thursday from May to October. We hold it on the Nichols Improvement Association property off of Unity Road. So basically give an idea of the type of vendors we have at the market. We have six different uh, vendors that have produce, eggs, beef, pork, seafood, flowers. We have eight vendors doing baked goods. We have three coffee and craft uh, beverage vendors. We have eight specialty food producers. We have two health and wellness, five artisans, uh, one services and a knife sharpener. And then we have two trucks and food tents, of which we have seven today. Um, just going to give you an idea of the people we have. So these are the farms we have. Um, they do quite well, they're quite large. The Gazy and Sunset Farms are our two biggest farms. The so Sunset Farms is a certified organic uh, farm. Uh, the Eaglewood Farm is mostly meats and eggs. And Backyard Blooms is a local flower um, producer. Baked goods. Uh, so basically, here too, you can see backyard looms is from Trumbull. Uh, then we have a Naga type Oxford, Barkansville. And then our baked goods, we have Sweet Brioche, uh, another Trumbull. We have Pam's Cookies, and then we have a bread and a mozzarella and a cellar, and then another uh, Trumbull resident, uh, Sunnyside Sweets. Specialty foods, we have oil and vinegar person, we have pickles, we have uh, someone from Orange who makes really good uh, granola, and we have yellow organic, which is Mediterranean type of food. And then for coffee and craft beverages, we have uh, continue on distilling, Revere Brewing, and French's Coffee, so Revere, Hard Liquor, and Coffee to do it. Uh, typical market dates. Uh, so we open typically the Thursday before Mother's Day, and then we close the last Thursday of October. Now that's not written in stone. Those can be changed. A lot of the local farmers markets around here, here don't start till second or third week of June. So it's up to who's ever running the market if they want to start that early or start a little later. 
the markets are pretty full in the beginning, mostly the first three markets. You probably have between 800 to 1,000 people at each market. Uh, markets run from four to seven on Thursdays. Uh, vendors start showing up around, can show up as early as 2 p.m. Um, so typically, after the market gets going, everybody gets settled, they probably start coming around three, the majority of them. Then a little later in the season, when the sun sets a little earlier, we reduce the market by a half hour to end at 6.30. Give you an idea what the current fees are. Again, when we took over the market, we didn't know a lot. So we just took what the fee structure was from previous year. And what we're finding out is we're talking to other markets, we're probably underpriced. I would say these prices for next year should all be up at least $100. I think that would be bring us more online with the other uh, farmers markets in the world. So right now, as I said, the market masters are Mary Beth and myself. Uh, our volunteers are pretty much listed here, and we have a good selection of high school students uh, volunteering. So I would say you need a good section of maybe three to four really solid volunteers that you count on. Uh, we're responsible for, I'll show you in a second, marking the field where the vendors go. We also set up a tent for ourselves, for the music vendor. And if you have any community tents, we sent those up also. So you can be setting up anywhere from two to four tents per market. Uh, all the other vendors bring their own tents, so you don't have to worry about that. And then PJ Pogues down here, and she takes care of scheduling all the music for the whole market, all the markets. So she's a real help, and uh, her music selections are excellent. And like I said, then we have a lot of students looking for community hours uh, that help us out. The biggest thing we need volunteers for at the market is actually helping with parking. Uh, we have two lots, um, and they can get quite busy, and people don't know how to park, so we've got to show them where to park especially our lot number two, which I'll share with you in a big field. So that's where you, you need most of your volunteers as the market is running. So this is a general layout of the market, and I actually update this every week. Typically, it doesn't change too much, but there are certain vendors, for whatever reason, can't make it. So uh, we will maybe move some things around to keep the market kind of tight and try to avoid any big open spaces. Right now we have about 40 vendors. A uh, couple of things I would do for next year, I, I'd recommend cutting down on two things. Uh, one, the artisans really don't fit in with the farmer's market. It's something that we just inherited from the previous um, market masters. And what I would do, we currently have about five or six of those. I would go down to one road, rotating tent for, the, for next year where you can have different artisans come in each week and then charge them just a rate for, the, for, the, uh, for each market. And I think that would make the market a, a lot better by having less of these artisans and more people with you know, bakers and farms. And also with food trucks, I would probably cut down to one food truck and make it a rotating space. A lot of the issues that we've had with the market in the past is the pre previous market masters were promoting it as a place to come and hang out. So it was a big thing to have a lot of people come and stay for the whole market, just sit on the grass, eat at the food trucks. But the only problem is they weren't buying much from the vendors. So the vendors' business started to get down. And we actually had 19 vendors not come back this year because they said they couldn't make enough money. And actually, I think they just had too many vendors, period. So the idea we're trying to do this year is have a smaller space for people to hang out. And we've been really promoting to come and support the farms, which is the main thing with the market. So again, next year I will cut down a little bit food trucks and stuff because that's the most people are coming and just hang the market. And then we also found is if you have 40 people come and hang for the whole market, that's 40 parking spots that don't turn over. And you can have 800 to 1,000 people in the market for getting turn over the parking. So for those who haven't seen the market, let's see if I can get this to come up.
So that's the, the gist of the market. Uh, to give you an idea how much time we spend uh, during the week on the market, typically Mary Beth and I will meet uh, Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock at Flasco's for a tea and coffee and just review what the market layout is going to be for the week. And then I uh, email out the layout to all vendors and volunteers. And, and then again, on market day, we usually meet at the field at about 10 o'clock in the morning where we go and actually spray paint the field, marking where the vendors are going to go. So when they come in, they can go to their spot, which is also on the map, but we have the initials on the spots. Uh, so it's quite well organized. We have the list of the vendors and the relationship with everyone. So once the market's up and running, it's not a huge amount of time. I just say we're coming at 10, mark the field, takes about an hour, then come back at, uh, we also put the two or three tents up that we have to adapt in, and then we come back at two o'clock, and this giant wrapped up, I even put it at 7 30. So that's the gist of how it works. Anybody have any questions? I know we're going to see Payne there this week. That's a great presentation, Mark. Um, yeah, lots of questions, I'm sure. Uh, one, I guess, is are you or Mary Beth going to be still doing this next year? Or are you? What's, well, what's Mary Beth point? is moving out of state. She's moving to New Mexico. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay. I will help some, but I'm also on three other organizations I volunteer for. So I've made the commitment to do this this year full time. To help the organization out the past president of the NRA over 30 years of them. So Mary Beth and I kind of stepped up to help this one year. And I can help some, but I'm not going to be able to do it for a and, and especially and, setting up the next day. Okay. Is um is the farmers market a is it an official organization, a 501c3 or anything like that? Or how do you how is it organized? It's an association of the 501c3. So yes, it is. Okay. Has has anyone from the NIA board been approached to take this on since it is, you know, part of part of that organization, or is it um Good trying question. to keep it kind and of yes, separate? Yeah, no, yes, they have. I think the, the problem we have with them is that it's a relatively young board. Most of them have young children and are working full time. Okay, so, that makes sense. My best and I are retired, so we have three things that we can do. Spend time. So, you know, unless you work for yourself out of your house or something, you could spend a half a day doing this on Thursday. So, in addition to half a day on Thursday, there's looks like there's a bit of prep work over the off season and in between days. Yeah, so I would organizing say vendors. In January, you start, you want, to, you want to start reaching out to the vendors to make sure that they want to commit again for the year. Most of them will come back or do a repeat. Uh, some, some may not, you know, if they're not making money, they won't come back. They seem to be doing a little better this year. We did a survey of them. I would say, you know, the farms are doing well, and that's really what we're uh, the main goal. Yeah, it's not, a, it's, again, I, when I took it over, we had nothing. We had no turnover. I had to go to the website, get the names of the people that were there the previous year. The old market master had sent an email out to the vendor saying he wasn't involved anymore to contact us. And luckily someone forwarded me that email and I was able to kind of line up the email addresses with the different uh, vendors. So we, we basically started from scratch. We had no idea. <laughs> so, but it worked out. So yes. who will, oh yeah, Mari, please. Yeah, hi Mark, nice to see you. Um, just a quick question, um, can we, um, do you have like a little flyer or something you've put together looking for a volunteer? Or is it like an official position that you want us to share on our social media? We could do that for you, I'm thinking. It's nothing together. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't have something like we, we kind of right. just been reaching out to different people or trying to get a feel. I'll, I'll put something in there. I know um, someone that's plugged into with um, the Westport Farmers Market. Maybe somebody there. If it's a, I think theirs is also Thursday, but I'm just thinking maybe a market that runs a different day. They would be willing to kind of just replicate their model, or um, you know, just pop in and do the Thursdays here. You never know. Yeah, and awesome. your person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. How are you? Good. So. 
I'd always known this, known it as the Trumbull Farmer's Market, but it seems like it's been renamed the Nichols Farmer's Market. I was just wondering what the reasoning was behind that, because Trumbull, it seems to be more like more inclusive or broader. Just curious. Two reasons. One, it was originally the Nichols Farmer's Market when it came to the NIA, and then the market management for us changed it to the Trumbull Farmer's Market. And the reason we went back to the Nichols because we wanted to rebrand. <laughs> there was issues with the other market where it was turning into more of a fair and a place to come hang out than a farmer's market. So we're just trying to rebrand this away from the previous market transfers with the trouble known as just time to put a blanket on it. Away from that, we want people to come and spend money with the bank. It wasn't meant to not to be inclusive, just more of a new brand. Away from the And somebody could always change it back if they want. Does your 501c3, how many how many members are on the, the board? Ooh, um, 501c3, the, yeah. The, the executive board, I think, right now is about 13 people. And then the board of trustees, and then about five, which is about three people. Membership wise, man, I. Thank you. Again, as you, I'm sure you all know, it's hard to get volunteers, people to step up to do this. But again, I'll put something together, and if you could post it on your social media, that would be great. And if you just get the word out there, that'd be fantastic too. And if anybody from your organization is interested, just let me know and come down and visit us on Thursday so we can see what the members are about. Sounds good. When are you hoping to, uh, I guess you're hoping to get it as soon as possible. What's your. Yeah, I think of, the sooner the better. The, yeah, the sooner the better. At least you can come and see what it's all about. And we can, we can work with the weather and it's how everything works. All right. Anybody else have any other questions? Are there hands raised? I don't see. Uh... We all expect to be there on this day to see Pam and her great day. That's right. All right. Thank you very much. See Thanks, you Mark. Thursday. Appreciate it. Bye bye. Right. All right. Well, we still don't have a quorum, so let me, uh, we can move on though in our discussion uh, on the agenda. Let's see what we have. So, um i've got on the agenda do, does anybody have to jump out early jump off early no we're all good all right i guess we'll just go down the list then um so i've got on the agenda next pollinator pathways is there any updates on pollinator pathway stuff anybody nothing new from me okay pam do you know if if mel um got the uh the seed approval yet for the native seed? No idea. That was all I had for pollinator. <laughs> Is that right. for the veterans garden or the, the lawn after the covered bridge on the right there? Yeah, the, for the lawn. I know she was still waiting to see if that was gonna come through. Mm -hmm. And then the watershed pledge was the next item. Yeah, that was, uh, that was Richard. I was hoping to, that was mimicked from Glastonbury. And I was hoping to kind of condense it into a smaller version um, uh, and use it for our submission. And you oh, know, me, okay. I, I can't do a Google Drive thing at all. So Richard had started that, um, and it didn't quite, you know, didn't reach the finish line. But we didn't really need it for that point. So I spoke with Mel, and uh, it's probably best to put it back for, you know, revamp it to how we'd like it. Put it back for the spring as a reminder about. Um, you know, issues, issues with clear cutting and rip wrap, rip wrap, rip wrap, whatever. Uh, but all of that, and then you know, other water usage and things. So that'll that'll come down more in the spring. Okay. And then uh anything on the water side brochure delivery. What is that? I'm not even sure. Is that here comes Janet? 
Yeah, Janet, there we go. Am I supposed to say something? <laughs> if, if you if you like to. <laughs> well, you can just charades it. Yeah. We well, um, me and, and, and four other people walked around our neighborhood delivering these. Um, and I spoke to a number of residents, which I thought was really very interesting. I heard a lot of horror stories and some happy to get this brochure stories. Um, I was wondering if they've all been circulated to the list that Tatiana gave us, if, if everybody's done those deliveries for um, the town yet. That was one question. <clears throat> um, the other, the other question was, um, and we've also started a conversation about this on Facebook, actually, on our, on our group, uh, Lake Asso um, a lake-oriented group, um, and people uh, are interested in it. And one thing that came to mind for me was um, how important it is to include the letter from the IWWC conservation in the in the bro with the brochure because the brochure makes absolutely no reference to whether you need any permission to um, do any disturbance um, in the setback area. So, um, and I'm hearing people, you know, saying I want to do this, I want to do that, and I don't think people are making the connection. Uh, even though they've got the letter, uh, some of them are more knowledgeable, some of them are new residents, they're very excited to have some direction. Um, so number one, I had asked, um, and I see on the town website that we have the brochure, and I can, I can send people a link to that. But what I can't find, and this may be my technological lack of expertise, I cannot find the new letter. There's a 2017 letter lurking out there somewhere, but the 23 letter I cannot find. And I don't know if Bill can help me do that or if we've uploaded it or no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it got uploaded yet. I know you sent Mel that, but I didn't see any any okay. response from her text. I just like to say Tatiana. Um, I didn't see a response in that, but I agree. It's important to get that letter up there. And yeah. then hopefully we can also get it out from, you know, the town as a blast, uh, okay. the, the letter and the brochure. Okay, because they have to be connected because there's no reference to it in the brochure. I did write to Tatiana, got a wonderful response from her. She's willing to, she's willing for people to call or email her, do a consult. I mean, she's amazing. And she did make more explicit what, you know what needs to happen and what she likes to see and everything and it's just superb so shout out to her that's great makes it a lot easier for people if they can talk to somebody who's open-minded and helpful so if All right. when the letter's up there that would be great so we can we'll follow up then with with i know mel's in maine um, but follow up with her to get that added because I agree the the fact that it has the um, the rationale for it why it's being put out penalty uh, you know and some teeth to it so um, you know we can check with Mel make sure that that gets up if there's anything else and you know as I said kind of getting it disseminated and I know the um, I, I believe Mel did some around Dogwood Lake but I don't think anything has gone out at all to um, Canoe Brook. So that'll be the next follow-up of how many people we need and the numbers to do that, uh, you know, to get it out in that area, you know, as I said, and then put it out kind of as a, a full wash so people are aware. Okay, that's good. Cause I have a few extras that were undeliverable for various reasons. So I also have some, if you needed more. There's another um, lake too, isn't there a Thrushwood? There's another small lake in town. I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but I think we I think we just had it actually cleaned out. <laughs> Cindy, you may know. Um, Thrushwood, isn't it? Is it Thrushwood? The, the only one, other one I can think of is Thrushwood. So oh, there's, there's a. This used to be a golf course here. There's some ponds that are here. The dam at Gunther Park was cleared out, or the Gunther Park pond. Yeah, Gunther was. I think that was cleared out too. 
I don't know if that's what you were thinking of. I know Tatiana sent us several lists. Some are long and some are not long. Yeah, I just don't know if, if Mel has followed up with anybody. I've gotten the information for the uh, email for getting through association, but I don't know if she has, has gathered volunteers. She did ask me to drop off the bags for um, dogwood, but nothing for um, um, canoe. So that'll be definitely one that we need to follow up with. And thrush, what is your saying, if that's another as well? Yeah, a few others. Booth, Booth Hill Road, I don't know which group that was in, but it's it's in another list. Yeah, so we can follow up with her uh, kind of off and then see what still needs to be done and how many volunteers we can get and, uh, you know, and then get that letter up as well. I'll volunteer and I think maybe my my cronies might help too. Okay, that worked. You're on. So <laughs> thank you. All right. Um, the next uh, item I have is sediment and erosion control guidelines. Wasn't that something Mel was talking about too? Maybe. Um, What's that? Oh, I, I know do, that I'm... we got into a big uh, to do because someone at the end of Valley View Road built a house, number nine Valley View, cut down a whole bunch of trees on a steep slope. And starting in October, I was sending Mel pictures of erosion coming from that dead end street into the valley uh, when I'm walking the Tate Road Valley uh, Trail. And um, it's gotten really bad. In fact, I think it was two weeks ago, I took pictures of a guy shoveling silt into a wheelbarrow and pouring it down into the valley where it goes right into the river. So, you know, there's really, there was no oversight on what this guy was doing with this property. And I think it, it brought up the fact that we, we have to have some kind of oversight, a little more aggressive oversight on what, what these builders are doing and what the impact is and the impact for this one house that was built is enormous so and that may be where this bullet came from and it's uh you know along where the hardy lane development is being proposed to so you can, yeah. you can yeah. extrapolate from there what that's going to look like so i forget is, is it, are they still trying to work on a steep slope ordinance yeah i don't it's think still... it was ever updated that would be the same thing, right? We're talking months about months and months and no response, no updates. It's very yeah. frustrating. I, I think mm -hmm. Mel said that she had had a, a conversation with um, uh, Attorney Cordon and that it looked like it was close to getting um, to what she was hoping for. Um, and they are, you know, the rewrites are happening slowly uh, and it's been a long time. So hopefully that will occur. But um, actually, if you have, Pam, if you want to share some of those. Um, pictures it would be interesting you know as i said we see that there's a lot of these things happening and ending up being not the repercussions that we would hope for as you know as, as janet's saying put the letter out so people are aware of of you know would you like to see form. the letter the pictures now sure let me see if i can bring them up here quickly without taking much time Let's I'll just share the more recent ones. Um, and let me go back to here and share my screen. Can you see this picture? Yeah, okay. So this is, um, this is a photo I took in the valley. Oh, where'd it go? Come back. Hold on. Did something. You can see here, this is all sediment coming from where the house was built up here on the slope. Yeah. And it got to be about, I would say about seven or eight inches of silt here. And, and it went from can you see my cursor where I'm pointing? I'm not yeah. sure. So 
it went from here all behind me. So it was a long, it wasn't just this one area. And you can see here um, where it was coming down and how much was coming down. And yes, this was after a very large, uh, very big storm, but this has been getting worse and worse since October. So it's not anything new. You don't want to see that. I'm going to see if I can find the guy with the. Um, so this was a few days later. There were several inches more silt in this one spot. And then, hold on a second. You don't want to see pictures of fungi. But anyway, I had pictures also of um, of the guy that was. Um, shoveling the silt down into the valley. And I, I don't want to bore you with all the other pictures that are mixed in there because I wasn't prepared to show any, any of them. But so it's, it was a- Is this the house is still being built? The house is, is done being built now, but they're doing landscaping. So did so, they take down the silt fence and did they have the hay bales there? And they just um, everything? In October, there was no silt fence at all when this all started. So I sent it per, per mail, I sent an email to uh, the town engineer, his name Morrow. Anyway, and I never heard back, never got a response. A few weeks later, there was a silt fence put up, but I don't think there was hay. But by then, a lot of the rivulets, a lot of the damage was already done. Uh, and it just got worse and worse. And then recently, the silt fence was taken away. They did some more bulldozing in there. And they were making the hill, the slope that they had cleared of trees, they were making that into a, I guess, a plantable hill. And I think they put grass seed down. And now at the top of that hill, there's another silt fence. But at this point, you know, with several wheelbarrows full of silt thrown into the river, uh, that ship has sailed. But, you know, I guess the, the point is there's no guideline for this guy. There was no oversight, or if there was, it wasn't aggressive enough because he just kept doing what he wanted to do. I'm not clear. Is there even, I mean, I guess there's guidelines somewhere, but there's, if there's no ordinance, then there's really nothing, is there? Well, they said I mean, that the, have? The, the slope that he wanted to clear was within the, the parameters that existed, but that's what one of the things we're trying to get changed is the steep slope going from, I think it was 30 degrees to 15 or yeah, something like that. So that you can't just take any slope and say, I'm going to clear this of all trees and, and shrubs and then build on top of it, you know, so. And there's also, when you, when you go to P and Z, there's the whole, you know, I don't want to say you've got to jump through hoops. You're supposed to be, um, but they do require you to do specific things when you are building. And it is like the silt fence. It has to be proper. Um, it, there are hay barrels, there's um, ways that you have to put up specific uh, landscaping. So there's, there's a lot of regulations that go into it, but I guess the problem is you go there, you get approved, and then uh, I guess the, you know, the question here is, so what's the follow-up? Did it, did it happen? Did it not? And yes, if there's, I know at Moorfield, when Mel was watching that, like a large rainstorm, things were impacted, but is it a one-time thing or is it something that's continuing? And and who's you know who's coming back to these developers to say you're not following the rules and um, you know penalty yeah what's the penalty is there a fine is there something that says you know you can't build in this town again I mean what what is the what slap on the wrist and gee we're really upset that you did this doesn't do that much so um, it just does raise the point for the Hardy Lane conversation also because that property has some um, impacted soil from the former owners who dumped there. And if this, if they're gonna, it's gonna be run off into the river from there, it's gonna be all polluted soil and silt coming down, so. All right, thanks, Pam. Not, not the most uplifting story, but <laughs> what, what else is new, right? What else is new? All right, um, that was near Hardy, what? Was that near Hardy Lane or where was that? Valley View off? runs parallel. If you're going up Churchill Road, there's all those streets um, that are dead end streets or little streets that go up along the valley there. 
Uh-huh. What was the name of the street again? The street where Valley this View. Valley Number View. Nine Valley View. Gotcha. Hardy Lane, I think, is like two or three streets up. All right. Actually, can I ask Pam, sorry, that one separate question. I remember you were also watching um, some erosion that was in the trail itself. I believe you were saying when you were walking and watching on the side, I don't know if that's still, you're still monitoring that or if that was from Valley View. I that was know. from Valley View. And, it and is. When, okay. You know, because of the removal of the trees and that destabilized the slope, now we have at least one mature birch tree where you can see there's erosion underneath the root base because the water just keeps rushing around it. So there's gonna be trees that are gonna fall eventually onto the trail from that steep, from that sloped area. And it's, it's at least 25 feet long. It's not just one small area, it's a lot. Uh, the, the trash that came down from Valley View, I picked up the trash and took it to the bin, but uh, the silt down into the river. All right, thank you for that. Um, anything new on the Thousand Trees for Trumbull mosaic of biodiversity? I think Mel has some designs for some signs that she's working with Dimitri on, but I don't know what the progress is on that. But there, yeah, was, some okay. nice, there was some nice work done on what that was going to look like. Okay. And more trees planned for the fall, but I don't know if those have been selected yet either. Well, that's cool. We'll save that. Um, and we've got uh, updates on the recycling drive. I think, Mari, did you want to talk about sure. anything new there? Um, yeah, so we were talking um, this past Saturday. Uh, it's been a couple months now. We got um, notice that the BIC Paracycle Program has been discontinued and we've been collecting pens and markers still just in case we found somewhere, but we don't have anywhere. So um, I think we're gonna have to make notice on the website and our written materials and on social media that we're gonna discontinue that collection. But we've decided we'll add um, all brands of chip bags because we have um, two known locations we can drop off and then we already approved to purchase that box um, to collect it as well, so. I think we'll move forward with that. Um, sorry, could you give me the last part? I was writing your first part and I missed your second part. Oh, basically we're discontinuing oh. pens and markers at the recycling drive, but we're gonna add all brands of chip bags. Chip bags, okay. Yep. Um, we voted to buy that box and we had talked about, I think two months ago, maybe just making like a recycling drive annual budget that we can vote on. Um, that would be helpful because I just sent back another box of um, razors and it's like $11, $12 a quarter roughly. But um, did we decide what that budget might be? Mary, did you have anything in mind of what that might be? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I missed that last. I was just saying, um, I just noted there's two attendees that are on. I don't know if if, um, yeah, I was going to make a, a mention of that also. Yeah, yes, I only know right. one of them, but um, oh, yeah. Okay. Do you, my my question was, I don't want to put you on the spot. Do you? But do you have um, any information on what the budget might be annually for recycling drive items that we can ship back? I don't. I I wasn't at that meeting where it got. A, I don't remember where I was, but I wasn't at the meeting where you guys had discussed that. And and I know that was one of the uh, the areas. So. Um, okay. I it's it I guess it depends how we want to we we haven't spent much we've we bought the no. uh, the two banners uh, the tablecloth so our you know our budget's been limited and then the box so um, if that's something that you know the group wants to do I think that's fine um, you know to you know I guess I guess it's to see how we feel we should best be spending the funds that we have um, and if that's an area that's important and that makes an impact then you know we certainly should. Uh, there's other areas where flyers, do we really want to do flyers? Do we want to, you know, or do we want to go with Richard's not here, QR things. So we cut down, you know, it's a, that whole discussion, but I think if that's something that we're getting, you know, it, it sounds good to me. Um, yeah. and then, so if everyone wants to do that, you just need to, um, let me know for a invoice for that, which then I right. can get to Maria and then it'll come out of our special revenue account. And okay. Bay State, by the way, 
we they increased our amount of um, uh, per ton that we were being paid. So uh, so that's that without even asking. So that's a good thing. Oh, great. And then you were going to look at with base date um, the adding a second collection bin at both places. I know we just talked about that. Yes, I had asked. I sent to the principals and never heard back. And I'm assuming because it was summer. Uh, so I'm going to let them and and I had spoken with the Bay State uh, representative and he had said if it's spring cleaning, give it a couple of weeks, but it didn't end up being spring cleaning. It continued. So they they're constantly overflowing. So there's definitely an increased usage from those and probably because we do put it out there a lot. So um, the two bins hopefully will will be, um, you know, allowed to be put in. We don't pay for the bins at all. So it's just one more so they don't sit on the ground. Mari, in answer yeah. to your question, I thought we had approved in a previous meeting for to spend some money on you just like a general box, right? For stuff. Yeah. So that it was, yeah, it was a box. I forgot how much, 200 and something dollars or under 200. I forgot somewhere around there, but um, to collect the chip bags. But I've still been able, the amount we've been collecting without advertising that we collect chip bags just by pulling out from the chip yeah. bags people mix in with commingle with the plastic. Um, I've been dropping those off at REI in Milford and one of our attendees um, has let us know that Subaru and I think Milford also collects them. But we're just afraid if we advertise that the chips are, the bags are being collected, we'll get too many. And then I will go ahead and purchase the box. But I have not purchased it yet until the need arises. Do but they, with that budget, I guess. I could do, they, if, or do they allow us to drop off for free? Like they don't? Yeah. Okay. As long as it has room. I mean, they're paying for the boxes. Someone's paying for it. Well, that's not one of the free it's... offerings. Yeah. So it's it's a fine line. Like right now, I mean, I roughly bring like one brown grocery shopping bag a month or whatever. Because you can shovel quite a bit in there. But if we advertise we're collecting them, then we might have 10 bags, let's say. And then I they definitely won't have room. So. Yep. Got it. Pam. So I propose, if everybody's okay with this, that we make a sign for the bin that is behind Hillcrest Middle School that says Big Hearted Books on it. Because I noticed that that bin is getting packed with textiles. Got there, Mary. Yeah, something like that on, the, on that other bin. You know, go that way to the pool parking lot and drop off your textiles because um, I don't think we're getting all we could be getting. Yeah, I had that, I had done that last it's funny because i went back to find the picture um i'd taken a picture of what they accept so i uh, you know because when people do ask who takes dvds or vcr tapes and all yeah. um so it was it was last year where i put a sign up and i'm sure it's gone so i printed that out and i do have you know the line pointing and saying pull a parking lot i just haven't gotten there yet so i will oh. put that I will put that up tomorrow. It was on my table to get to today and I ran out of time. But uh, but definitely that that bin was stocked with bags. You could see uh, somebody, I, I think it was for, yeah, you sent that or somebody put it on that came to our um, Gmail account. So someone had put a picture up and it was definitely bags of clothes. So for our attendees here, I don't know if they, how, how do, if they want to comment, how does this work? I don't think they can. And if if I, uh, they need if they would like to comment, I can give them the ability to do that. Um, okay. Just raise your hand at the bottom of your screen. If if you're on the phone, press star nine to indicate that you'd like to speak. All right. You got that, attendees? I'm not sure that I'll speak for you, Courtney. Yeah, if you want to, if you change your mind, let me know. But um, I invited uh, Courtney Barr, who's on the Friends of the Library group. She's expressed interest in get, just getting to know. Um, more information about our group and possibly, you know, taking a position um, down the line if we um, decide that Richard's position is open. So, um, okay. yeah, she's very recycling and composting minded and attended our um, presentation that late April made at the library. So. Sure, welcome. Oops. Mm -hmm. No, the other attendee though. Um, And then Jeffrey, who's Jeffrey? Do we know who Jeffrey? Might be Jeffrey. Oh, her hand. Through. Oh, there we go. Phone call in. Phone caller, you're on the line. 
That is Jeffrey, who raised his hand. I've asked him to be a panelist. He just needs to. Uh, Jeffrey, all right, go ahead. Yes, on that. Okay, he'll be joining momentarily. Whenever you're ready, Jeffrey. Uh, he's coming in now. Hi, how's it going? Can you hear me? Good, yes, thanks. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I just moved to Trumbull. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Jeffrey. Uh, I just moved to Trumbull at the beginning of the month, and my friend Sarah, who's on the line right now, who's the caller, invited me to the meeting, and I'd, uh, I'm i very into composting and sustainability. Uh, I'm vegan. I uh, am hoping to start a garden really soon out back here. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be here, and thanks for letting me talk. Welcome. Welcome to Trumbull. Thank you very much. Yeah. I missed the first. I, my computer froze when you were introducing yourself, so I didn't catch your last name, Jeffrey. My last name is Gazinski. Go ahead, spell that. Yeah, it's G U Z I N S K I. K I, right. Okay. Hey, what is that? You just moved here, you said? Just at uh, August 1st. So I've been here wow. for a few days. Oh, wow. Yeah, welcome. Thank you very you come much. From somewhere? Where'd you come from? Of course, you came uh, from I moved here from Stanford. Oh, okay. Yeah, not too far. All right. Any questions you have while we have you on the phone? Go ahead and shoot. Uh, I don't have any questions at the moment. Um, I'm just here to listen. You know, this is my first meeting, so I just kind of want to see what you guys talk about and uh, kind of get a feel for things. Um, uh, as my friend who's on the phone is saying, we both are uh, adamantly opposed to all two-stroke engines uh, in gas-powered leaf blowers and lawn equipment. So uh, we'd love to be involved in any committees that are trying to you know, cut down on all these landscaping companies that are creating noise pollution and, of course, you know, air pollution uh, and adding to the greenhouse gases. But uh, besides that, that's all I can think about at the moment. Um, but uh, Sarah, who is on the phone, may have something to say. I don't know. Feel free to uh, patch her in if that is possible. Didn't Stanford just start or have a ban on gas-powered blowers? It's very weak. They tried. It has absolutely no teeth. It's uh, I know they were trying to copy one of the local laws. There, there is a very small group, but Stanford's so large. And it's hard to get anything done or talk to anybody in a government role. So it, it, they pass the ordinance, but the ordinance is essentially the same ordinance as it was before. I've been watching different towns around the country as they're starting to adapt or adopt those ordinances. But it's a tough sell because all these landscapers already own all the equipment. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, I agree with you. They are ox on yeah, uh, it's so much better here, though. It's amazing the, the difference going from in Stanford. It's like every single house all the time. You can barely hear anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, welcome, Jeffrey. Thanks for, for joining us. And uh, let's see what, what was on next on my list here. If we don't have any other guests or questions. Um, so are you set there on the uh, recycling drive, uh, Mari? The chip bags and the markers. And... I am. Yeah. Okay. Did we have the coastal cleanup on there, or is that next on the agenda? I, yeah, it's just about it's second to next. Oh, so the next, okay. the next one I have is a uh, food scrap initiative. I don't know if there's anything new there. Nothing um, new municipally. I mean, I, as far as having anything at the transfer station, um, at least I haven't heard anything about it. But. Um, I finally signed up for the RWS compost. Yeah, I've uh, had it now for about a month. Yeah, nine ninety nine. It's really a good deal. They gave us the bin. Like I think it's and, and it, it it accepts so much more than just your home right. compost and bones and meat and fish and everything. Yeah, and paper towels and stuff like right. that. So it's actually I'm excited about it. Um, as you all know, I will be at the farmer's market on September 14th for Sustainable Trumbull. It would be great to have someone 
either someone there from RWS or maybe one of their bins or something like that. So I tried writing to, I think he calls himself Johnny Trash. <laughs> and I didn't hear back from him. But if anybody knows him or wants to drop him a line to see if he wants to send some stuff over for me to bring, that would be great. Um, I can also just try again through the Sustainable Trumbull email on that. Because I think curbside composting, I think, was $32 a month. Wow. Yeah. And they and only had 15 houses. Yeah, it was a lot. So for $9.99 yeah. a month, you get two pickups, you get the, and then you get the startup fee. I think it's something like, I don't know, if it's 30 bucks. You get the yeah, it wasn't bags. Too much. So, I actually yeah. used uh, curbside compost when I lived in Stanford. It was nearly $40 a month. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, yeah, one cheap. of our local haulers has it now, and it's much cheaper. It's RWS. Yes, I, I have signed up with them. Great. Yeah. And they they also leave a new bag every time. So, which is which? I was surprised. I thought I'd be buying a new roll when we were done. Just don't miss your second week, or you have it sitting for a month, and then it's a really. Yeah. yeah. We were waiting for them to come in their hazmat suits. When since putting <laughs> and everything, I'm like, no. Um, but Pam, I can shoot him an email and see if um, if he gets back and. Uh, we're we're away that week, but I do have worst case um, my little green bin. If you'd like to borrow it and you know put it up there, I I can. I could bring mine too, but I okay. thought maybe some of the materials the materials it would be great to have a stack of them there or whatever they give away. Uh, yeah. we'll have there and then this week, don't forget not on the agenda, but don't forget to come see me at the farmers market on Thursday this week because I will be there for Connecticut Yukon Master Gardener. So I will have their um, microscope and books and you can bring me your garden problems and questions. And I will also have pollinator pathway materials. With you. Come by and say hello. Cool. My double hand up. Um, has anybody found out if the apartments in town are signing up with RWS or um, want to take on that initiative? I'm looking at Jeffrey's name since he's... <laughs> interested in food scrap collection maybe I think that to me that's just like such a niche I mean all of us obviously are signing up for the food scrap collection at our homes where we can backyard compost but they don't have that choice so I'm wondering um, if we can help them penetrate the apartments if anyone wants to do that just an idea I'd be happy to be involved. Um, as I said, I just moved here. I don't know anything about the town. Um, uh, so <laughs> I still have to learn. Put you so. on the spot there. Sorry. Yeah, that's, no, that's, that's, why that's, that's why we're signing you up. Because sure, yeah. that would be good. We'll have to tell you where the apartments are. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe, Jeffrey, maybe you can get us your email to sustainabletrumbull um, at Gmail, and we can maybe start a group email with um, Johnny Trash. Excellent. I don't want to be the, the involved party if I'm not signing up to help, but um, I don't know if I have the bandwidth, but I did meet him at our presentation on um, composting, so I, I don't mind being involved in communication or whatever. Excellent. And honestly, I, I know I had asked him at some, I was just trying to find on my phone, I know I had asked him at some point if they were going to be um, working with the apartments, and I cannot remember um, if he just said yes, it's planned or if they had already started something. So, um, you know, that's obviously a little different than the one little green bin, but uh, that that would be great. Oh, yeah, that's them. True. yeah, but still they, you know, that's that's one of the things where um, it, it, everybody's in one spot. So I think that would be fantastic. Well, Mary, if you're emailing him for the other question, do you want to just add this gauge if he's interested in help that we can Go from there. Sure, and I'll yeah. tell them we have somebody that's new that can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll probably end up helping too. <laughs> what a surprise. All right, thank you again on that. And then um, getting to your coastal cleanup, uh, uh, Mari, you want to bring us up to date on that? Yeah, so I just um, heard back from George today um, that he is deferring to Dimitri to see if we could host the cleanup at just Twin Brooks Park or if the group has a suggestion for another town park. Um, he was not in favor of us dispersing attendees to the um, commuter lots to clean up there because they're, I guess, state property and liability issues. Um, 
we have done that in the past, and I'm not sure, tidy up Trumbull, how they handle the liability of their event. But um, I mean, I guess if everybody feels that one of the parks is warrants a cleanup, we can do it. Otherwise, we can just pass on doing it this year. I mean, I don't know. I'm willing to give my time that Sunday and try to, you know, market the event. But if the town's not in favor of it, I'm not, I don't need to, you know, move forward. So I guess we could wait and see what Dimitri says, or does anyone have an opinion? If the, if I know for the bags when, uh, because we always get that route 111 um, uh, down to 25 and the bat, we just leave all the bags. It ends up going by Jensen basically, or it does go into the commuter lot, which we've left in the town is picked up. So I'm not sure uh, what's changed, but maybe what about even outside of the commuter lot or Christian heritage, which is right there if they're willing to, you know, allow that and a pickup. Again, they may say there's liability, but you know, I, I don't know. I hadn't heard that in the past. So about one of the yeah. parking rights. Yeah, I think are, are those... what you mean, right? The park, the the that park and ride, that's the liability. Is that what you well I said that we would, you know, um he was George initially had said um to circle back because he didn't want bags left all over town to have to go pick up. And I, you know, I said, well, based on our participation the last two years, I would anticipate everybody being at um, two a maximum of three locations, I thought, wherever we yeah. meet at the park, and then maybe the park and ride I, I threw out there, Pam, because we always clean up there for hours. There's um, days worth of work there. Um, and then I said, maybe a third location. And he responded to say that the 111.25 commuter lot could use cleanup, but it's state property. So for liability, he didn't want to commit to it. So he deferred to Dimitri and um, I'm just waiting. But based on that feedback, I mean, what does the group feel? I, mean, I don't want to spin my wheels to promote an event, stand there and have like five people show up at the park or have people come and there's not much to do. Do we want to just opt out this year and put our efforts elsewhere? Um, I'm fine with whatever the group decides. I don't disagree with you. I think, you know, we could promote it as something that people can do on their own, kind of like an anytime cleanup, but this is an event that's bigger than just what we do around town every day. Maybe make the post, share the Save the Sounds International Coastal Cleanup offerings, yeah. which include attending any of the truly coastal locations. And that, you know, that's again, how I got started years ago going to the hosted Fairfield location. So people could in our town attend there or they could do an anytime cleanup and we could reshare our link and call it a day. And I think that's the way to go. Okay. That's just me. I'll run it by April since she was co-captain with me the last two years, but I'm fine with that if put our efforts elsewhere. Yeah. All right. I'm just making notes. Um, so you'll talk to April. Sorry. Okay. Um, so let's see. Moving on, I have a uh, farmer's market we talked about already, and Pam's going to be there on Thursday and Thursday, September 14th, right? Come visit. I get long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Steve's got this. Sorry. And then let's see. Do, 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 moving on. All right, so getting out of the near the end here. Um, uh, we were uh, in a flurry to get everything done for submittal to sustainable CT to get our bronze certification, recertification. Um, just a quick summary for those of you who don't know, Jeffrey, we, uh, I don't know if, if Stanford is uh, participating in sustainable CT, if they, do you know if they have uh, any certifications with uh, sustainable CT? Are you familiar with that? I, I actually wasn't involved a lot in uh, any of the Stanford programs, so I don't know. Um, yeah, unfortunately, sorry, I wish I could help. That's fine. It's some of the towns are doing a lot on uh, in this and some are doing, some aren't doing anything. Um, but we got, there's bronze, silver, and now there's gold certification. 
that you can get depending on all the various things we've been just talking about are only some of the things you can do. Um, there's like 13, about 13 different uh, groups of, yeah, actions. And then there's all sub actions within them. So there's, in addition to what we've been talking about, you know, composting and recycling, there's also, you know, food networks and homelessness and, and uh, transportation and all, you know, everything under the sun. And so we were certified we got bronze certification in 2020. We got silver certification in 2021, but it all runs out in three years. You have to get recertified. So now we're recertifying. We just reapplied because the deadline was noon today to get recertified for bronze. So we submitted the information to Sustainable CT today and uh, we'll hear back. I forget how long it took them last time, a month or so to, to get back to us, but uh, we'll hear back whether or not they have questions. They always have questions, but um, we'll find out in probably in, in a couple of months whether or not we're actually recertified for at bronze level. So uh, thanks, Mary, for writing up all kinds of stuff for this thing. Uh, Mari and everybody else who, who participated, everybody participated, um, really. It thank was you guys for doing the heavy lifting on that. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So I Stanford different... is Stanford is registered as a town, but they are not certified. Okay, yeah. So they they've gone through the process of I, of getting a town liaison and maybe a some sort of uh, I don't know. Uh, we did a, a town council. Uh, what was it? Resolution. resolution. There you go. Town council resolution that said we would be registered with sustainable CT, and then we. And we actually did some stuff. So, um, yeah, so I guess Stanford's in, that's why I hadn't heard anything because they weren't really doing much in Stanford. So, and Bridgeport's the same way. I think they're, I think they're registered, but they haven't, you know, they haven't done uh, anything. But Bridgeport hired a guy. Yeah, they have a guy there. Hire. Who's, you know, and he's I actually, been there for maybe a year, maybe less than a year, not too I, long. Yes, I e met him because he wrote to the pollinator pathway asking about buying some signs for pollinator gardens that they put in around town really so i said hey oh it's nice to meet you i'm on this team i work in trouble so we're i'm probably going to bring him his signs and we'll just say hello to one another and, that's good i forget yeah. his name but i saw his name there too chadwick was, Schroeder. Chad, chadwick that's right yeah so that's good that they have somebody who's at least doing that and maybe we'll help them at some point if they need help one with interesting almost, thing um, that came up because uh, we had dinner. I had dinner with Mel and Mary a couple of weeks ago, and I think it was Mel said she had a conversation with Mary Hogue from Fairfield, and that um, they don't know that they're going to stay certified as a town anymore because they feel like they jump through hoops to get all the th these initiatives done, and they have to continuously send in to stay certified. So they're not really sure that it's worth the it's a ton of work. It's a ton, it's a of, ton work. of work. Yeah. Right. Bronze isn't so bad. But over again. Yeah. I imagine that, I mean, you need, we only needed 200, 200, right? Was it, Mary? 200. Yeah, we ended up, I put in bronze. 325. You need 200, but I was worried if we don't have well, everything. And Right. You need one from need every more. category, right? That's the thing. You have to get at least one from every category. And some of our categories were a little weak. So we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, but you need 700 points to get gold. And you have to be a climate something champion or I don't know, what it is, but something like that. All kinds of stuff. And I don't know how, you know, you need a whole like team of professionals to keep going on this stuff, it seems to me. Well, and, some of them uh, don't apply to every town. Like we're a small town compared to others. So we don't right. necessarily have a, you know, municipal bus system and we don't right. have- Or Brownsfields, right? That kind of stuff, yeah. Homeless problem, that kind of thing right. that we can enact certain things to get the point. So it makes it yeah. harder. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Um, so- Actually, can, I, uh, can, I go, can I go back to tangent? Sorry, back to Pam. For our, Do you have a relationship with Chadwick? I like to say Chadwick. Um, uh, if you do, because remember when we spoke with George, it might've been a year ago or more, um, but we were talking about- uh, how the how the city of Bridgeport was dealing with their garbage when we were talking about Big Belly and there was some service that he said wasn't um, 
wasn't town sponsored or being paid for from the town. Yeah, like there was something in there that he was going to check into. And then I know that it, there was never, we, we didn't hear back, didn't follow up. So that might be worth trying to find out what they're doing. How does that work? Or, you know, monthly cost for that, since we still have that poor big belly up in the air, which. Yeah. Um, well, if I, I haven't, once I quoted him the prices on the signs, um, I didn't hear back from him. I did provide a W9 for the pollinator pathway. And Jeffrey, this is pollinator pathway, an organization I work for, uh, but it's also one of the sustainable Connecticut's bullets on that list of things that you have to do. You have to be a pollinator friendly town, et cetera. Um, but when I do finally meet him and exchange signs for money, I will, I'll ask him about that. That's a good, good question. I mean, if, if you read about how he was hired and how that whole position came about, it's very interesting to me. Have to look. I didn't see that. Maybe April's here. Hi, April. We I'm have um, April who's muted. That's fine. Uh, you can unmute yourself at any time because now that you're here, we have a quorum for one thing. Looks like you either your phone's moving around or you're driving um, erratically. <laughs> no, I'm I'm driving. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why Mari <laughs> told me to jump on the last couple. Yes. Minutes. I'm here. What do we want to vote on? Oh, how about the minutes? Sorry. How about we approve the minutes from last time? We now have a quorum to do. Who wants to move uh, oh, to approve? I, I, I can move them. Oh, sorry. Mari moved before you. You got to be quicker. Okay. Mari moved. Who wants to second? You can second, April. Thank you. Okay. All approve. Yay. Thank you. All right. Mari, April. Hold on. I got to write things down. Um, Let's see, was there something, was there something, something? We were something. gonna, I was, April, I was gonna call you after the meeting. Um, just, I, uh, 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 I can't talk. I updated the group on the correspondence on International Coastal Cleanup Day. And yeah. I said, you know, if we're limited to just one park location in town, do we wanna just post that International Coastal Cleanup is happening at neighboring towns that are truly coastal, people can participate or they can do an anytime cleanup and give them the link from our website to use the, the app and call it a day. I mean, I feel like if um, it's not meeting our needs, are, is it worth our energy to continue as hosting it? And I was gonna ask your opinion on it. What do you think? I'm just confused as we would be permitted to host it the last two mm -hmm. years and all of a sudden this year, the answer is different. It just, it's yeah. mind boggling when another group in town does it. Yeah. So somebody that's thought, where somebody asked a lawyer, I think is what happened, right? Well, we're permitted to do it. It looks like um, Dimitri was going to weigh in on whether we were permitted to do it at just one town park or whether we're allowed to disperse groups to various commuter lots. I mean, we can do it at a park. It's just, is it warranted? and Or do we want to just promote International Coastal Cleanup Day in our anytime cleanups anyway? I mean... I mean, we can, I just don't think we're gonna, we usually get about 40 people and who show up, which is awesome. And they go around town, which is great. Um, again, I think it comes down to, I'll throw it out there, the equity issue. How can one group in town be allowed to do it and another group in town is told no, please explain. Then they'll tell everybody they can't do it. And then there you go. You know. I mean, and it's a good thing for the town, I mean, we clean up schools, we clean up the roads, we clean up things that aren't necessarily town property, but are part of the town. Right. So right. the state's not going to come and clean up the uh, any of those parking lot municipal, I mean, right. the, uh, commuter lots anytime. It's not no, and they're disgusting. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, still, that's the okay. question. That to Circle, what do you want to try to do on this? Is it only one? They, they say you only work out of one park? Is that what they said, Mari? I get the impression it was just more not to go on to state property. Oh, okay. Such so as you could the commuter do, lots. You could do Old Mine and Twin Brooks and whatever you want, really. If you wanted to, if you wanted to not do the commuter lot, right? You could still do a town, other town part. There's still plenty of garbage and you know, every everywhere. <laughs> I think it would be good to have a suggested route for people. Either you know, do your own neighborhood or go to Beaches Memorial Drive or go to the commuter lots to clean up. 
because I mean, I'm on the Tate Road Trail every day and I clean it up every day. It's, it's pretty clean. I'm in Twin Brooks once or twice a week cleaning up. So there are certain places in town that are not that bad. Right. And I don't so know if, we're gonna... be, if we just promote it and say, here are some neighborhoods that could use your help. Maybe that's a way to go. I don't know if we're allowed to do that. Well, I guess we need to hear back from Dimitri on what, what has transpired since community women promote this every year and everybody has their spots they hit. So is it that they don't have, is it partially they don't have enough guys to be driving around and picking up the bags or is it, has there been an issue and now they don't want people to go into the, being told as a town event to go into the commuter lot. So if, you know, kind of two different things there. So I guess if he can just let us know what the issue is and you know, maybe that is anytime, whenever cleanup does turn into more, here's spots that could be addressed versus this where it's kind of a sponsorship type thing where we're asking people to specifically go to spots. Is it because we're a town group and Trumbull Community Women is a private organization and their insurance covers attendees? I don't know. That's why I'm, that's why I'm curious. Or did something recently happen or something in another town happened, or it was just going through Dimitri and not through George. And now George is saying, you know, this is a lot. Do you know what I mean? It might be kind of the level you're going to of who's looking at things. So I guess if Dimitri can give us exactly what and why, and then to, you know, we can steer it from there. Okay. All right. Mari, April, whatever you, you whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, Mari and April, you're, you're the organizer. So yeah. however you decide you want to handle it. And it's a great thing. It's a shame to lose it, but I get, you know, the roadblocks kind of take away from the uh, the want and need to help sometimes. Yeah, I mean, just to throw it out there, Mari's been trying to get a date since June. Here um, we are in August. Finally got a response going back and forth today. So it's just, it's it's insensitive on the town's part. I'll say it lack of communication or transparency for sure. But I'll talk to Mari offline and we'll come up with a decision. All right, sounds good. Um, maybe no, not yet. Um, so the next second to last item, second to last item is uh, membership on the team. Hold on one second. So we have a number of changes, potential changes. Pam's nodding her head. Uh, Pam, you want to go first? Well, it came up recently that one of our members is going to is looking to leave the group, but there's no one to take his place, and we have to have a certain number for a quorum. And um, I'm planning on leaving too. And uh, I've been doing this since what, 2018, 2019. But I don't want to leave if there's not going to be someone to take my place. So I was wondering if we could have a discussion about how best to put a team together so that we have a real, more robust group of people to help do the initiatives that we wanna do and um, continue the group because it would be a shame for the group to just disintegrate because there's not enough people to do the, the uh, projects and things. So I was wondering, you know, do we wanna ask the Trumbull Times to do a story about the group and that we're looking for new members? Do we wanna put it on social media? Do, is there, are, are there other, ideas around getting some new members on board. So well, Richard yeah. Richard is, is leave has indicated he's, you know, ready to leave and Pam now. Um, so that's two people. Um, we haven't, no one else has, Jen has indicated she'd rather stay a, a guest and a tender and an active one. Um, but uh, yeah, so we would need someone ideally to take your spot, Pam. Not that anyone could, um, but um, yeah. For quorum purposes, though, I, yeah. For quorum purposes, though, we do have to have. Um, we've got uh, Kevin represents TNAC. I'm town council. Mel, Pam, you are both conservation. Um, Ralph is economic development, and then we have the members at large. Did I miss anybody that was quorum? I believe it was three members at large. Yeah. Um, so we would. You know, we if if anyone on and I again, Ralph, I don't know if he just jumped on because he um, uh, we needed somebody from the commission. If there's anybody that might 
be uh, interest. He's away a lot of the, most of the summer. If anybody is interested from economic development that might want to be more of a um, uh, working member as opposed to a listening member, you know, and then reporting. Uh, somebody from conservation. I don't know if there's someone that might want to replace Pam, but again, Pam, you're not replaceable. Uh, and then so then we have the, the members at large. So that's kind of the first thing. And that goes through the first selectman's office for uh, people that would like to apply and become appointed. So it's not really, uh, I don't think it's, it's, if we want to generate people coming to watch, that's something definitely on social media, but, but for filling the spots, that's more of a you know, appointed through uh, through the first selectman. So it would have to go that step first. Not that that's a big deal, I don't think. But Janet, do you have just your hand up? The bodies. Did you have your hand up, Janet? No, I'm just okay. listening. All right. Now, I thought you were raising your hand yeah. to say, I changed my mind. I want to be a member. But no. no. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I have to improve my sleep hygiene. So I have to limit what I'm doing. My sleep yeah, hygiene okay. is good. <laughs> sleep hygiene is important. Um, it's important the conversation, maybe an informal meeting with Vicki to discuss the composition of the group and the direction of the group because yeah, I just think we're at a pivotal time. Um, you know, maybe a few people who aren't leaving the group um, can sit down with Vicki offline and talk about what we want to do moving forward. That's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. that sounds good. Yeah, it would be, uh, yeah, Cindy's gone. Uh, I was going to say, um, yeah, we sort of have to figure out what we're doing because, you know, I don't know, the town hasn't been terribly active in anything sustainable particularly, right? So. I think that's and without challenge. Pam, nobody's going to get emailed back very quickly. <laughs> oh, that's another thing. I won't be doing the emails anymore. I, I saw an email from like four days ago. ago. Yeah. Oh, well, I think it's, it's you know, it's kind of a come to Jesus moment for, for the group and for the town. Yeah. And, um, you know, there are a lot of, we had a lot of great ideas and we did a lot of great things, um, especially during the pandemic. I mean, we, we kept it together. We had our whole Earth Week thing that we put together. and um, But it's just, we kind of lost our enthusiasm as the town has just not really cooperated with us a whole lot. So I think that that's... You know, I think it's a good idea to talk to Vicki and see what they want us to do. Or even the town council. We haven't done a, another town council update to see if there's any, yeah. you know, if they'll do anything for us. But Yeah, which is our the, our last agenda item is actually what you're talking about there, too, is, you know, what's the what's our future plans? It kind of goes together. Who, who's going to be on the team and who's, you know, what are we going to do? So, um yeah, there's lots lots to do there's lots that we have done right we keep trying to work on getting more uh you know a good composting system at the transfer station right can keep on working on that angle trying to do whatever we can pollinator wise and everything else i mean there's a lot there's just tons of stuff to do but uh yeah, and, you know who's... just a handful of people hold the reins to those items either going forward or not going forward Right. Um, a year ago, George came with Mal and I to the Westport Community Gardens, and he was blown away by that business model. And then we had crickets. We never heard from George about whether or not we could do something like that here in Trumbull. Um, right. And um, anyway, I won't get into the whole back and forth, but just recently, a group of people from the Community Garden um, put in a request to speak to the Parks and Rec meeting, and it was... they didn't have a quorum this past week, so it'll be next month, but they want to do something different there. So I gave George and Dimitri a heads up that this was coming. I didn't instigate it. It was from people who were already <laughs> at the community garden. And I got an email from Dimitri just saying, nope, not doing it. So, you know, there's no conversation around stuff, doing things that are new and different and possibly exciting. Um, for or better. Or better. Just you know. and so there, they have a terrible staffing situation at the moment, and it's I, I don't know how huge a constraint that is, but I mean, I get your frustration because we feel it too around some other issues uh, in our community that are happening and that we're going to be raising next month as well. But 
I think the staffing issue, I don't know, Mary, how much you know, you're following that, but the staffing situation seems to be a huge impediment to activity. So I don't know what the town is thinking about doing that, but I think it's a great idea to meet with Vicki and, you know, with a, like a summary of achievements, because it's, you know, you guys have worked really hard. Yeah, and, and Dimitri and George, I mean, they're just integral to most of what we're trying to do, too. So they really have to be part of that conversation, if it is a Agreed. conversation. Yeah. Yep. So Pam, you'll stay with us for a little while before you go anywhere. Yeah, and of course, and then, you know, one-off things, if you need help with, with certain things, I'm happy to pitch in. Um, I just find the, anyway, you've heard from me. Ellie well, wants me to go, so. Um, all right. Well, just to, yes. add, just to add something positive, since we do have a new potentially interested participant, uh -huh. um, <laughs> there yeah, are a lot of great old. things we've implemented. Jeffrey, I hope you can um, go to the Town of Trumbull Sustainable page if you haven't, just to check out. I, we talked obviously about a recycling drive. You can get more information on um, what we collect every month there and the glass pilot at the transfer station drop off and the textile recycling we talked about. So our team's got a lot of great things that we have accomplished and um, you know, whether we're a team or not, we'll continue to hopefully do these projects for the town. So I just wanted to make that known. <laughs> yeah, hopefully the team doesn't disagree. I mean, we really are between all of us getting a lot of stuff done. So and don't forget about the thousand trees for Trumbull. That was a big deal. Yeah. Tree city yeah. designation. That's that's huge. Yeah. No, it's yeah. all it's not all negative, it's just you know. It's, it's frustrating. Where do you go from here once you've gotten to this point? And I think right. we need we need help. And can I sorry, can I go back to RWS? Because I did find my email um, okay. with, with JR yeah. from April. Um, and I asked if it'd be open to the apartments. He said yes, different pricing, but it will. Um and then he was, when I'd asked him about the farmer's market, when we were going to be there, and he said he was interested in supplying flyers and materials made up. Um, but again, that was back in April. So I'm um, not sure what's happened with the apartments or anything like that, but I'll follow up with him to see if he's had any inroads. Um, the last time I had asked him, and I think that was um, that was at, at April's uh, presentation, he had said, I think there were 60 60 homes that they were um, that they were uh, getting compost from, but that was before Kevin. So then there were definitely 61. Uh, no, so anyway, I, I'll get an update from him as well. And again, I do hope, I, I, I've got to ask Cindy to push that from the town because that's a great thing. It gets everybody's, you know, to get all that out of the um, municipal waste system is a good thing. And uh, so hopefully we can get that pushed out, out as well. Very good. Um, that's all I have. Anybody, anything else? All good. All right. Did I mention Thanks. come see me at the farmer's market? Yeah, on Thursday and then next, Yay. and then September 14th. Well, I won't be around there, but yes. Uh, Jeffrey, thanks for joining us. Yes, Jeffrey. And, and not yeah, nice just to Jeffrey. Meet you. And I think um, Courtney's mate still be there, looks like. Uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us, Courtney. And uh, feel free to, um, you know, send us emails or what have you. What's the uh, sustainable CT? I mean, sustainable, sustainable at gmail.com. At, at gmail there you go. Piece of cake. All right. Good. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks, both.